Hello everyone, welcome to TechSquare. In today's video, we'll learn about how to process XML in Niffy using Niffy. And it's a very nice flow. I have used one complex XML where we have multiple purchase orders within one XML. And each of this purchase order has multiple get the nodes. Uh, there are three atomic nodes. Why I'm saying atomic? Because though we do have address two times, but they can be identified by the type, which is shipping and billing. And then we have delivery nodes. And this is also an atomic. Now, atomic means there will be only one value associated with per purchase order. And then we have items. Item is an array of multiple nodes. We can have more than one item within the item. So for this one, we will have a different processing. But this is an XML which we will be using. So before we start into the practical part of it, let's just read these labels. Because once you read this, it will make more sense for you to further proceed. So let's start with this one. So the note is appending data to attribute or appending data to content is the key for all operations. This, if you remember just this line throughout the video, you will get to know how to use it. And this is the key actually, how we process the whole document. Uh, so I will go through it once we go through each of the steps, but just remember this line. Then we have generate flow files. What this generate flow file do is, it is taking this XML as an input and generating as an input file for the further flow. So nothing else. So if I just double click on it, so I have just this whole document embedded into this one. And I've just provided the document type, which is application slash XML. Then we have split XML operator. This is processor. And what it do is it splits the XML based on the depth level. So now let me just explain you in simple terms. So if you see this document, this is depth one. This is depth one. So when I say I want to split this document by depth one, what it will do is it will take this one document and split into this three different purchase order documents, or you can say the flow files. Then for each flow file, we'll be separately processing each one of them for the further, you can say processing. So split, uh, uh, you can say split XML. What it do is it just split based on the number of level you have provided, the so the level number you have provided, and it will convert all the tags within that level into multiple documents. Now, we after that, we have evaluate, evaluate exp, uh, exquery. What it do is with this, we kind of extract the data, like, like billing city, billing country. And for this uh, expression, you don't have to worry. You don't need to remember how to make this expression. You just copy paste your XML to chat GPT and ask it to generate this expression for you. And these are very easy to make. So nowadays with chat GPT and AI, you can easily uh, come, come, you can see create this expression, so don't worry about it. Then we have route on content. Now, where we will be using this route on content, let me explain. So we have this purchase order. So as I told you, e once we split it, we will have each of the purchase order as a separate flow uh, flow file. Now, in this flow file, we have these three as an atomic values. Atomic nodes means there is only one value associated with them. So one is address having billing, then address is of type uh, shipping and billing. And then we have delivery nodes. So there are one per purchase order. And then we have items. Now to process items as it's a different nature, I need to route on content means I need to separately process this particular one. We will be extracting it and we will be separately processing this one so that we can uh, you can say easily process uh, instead of like creating one big uh, expression or using a script uh, functionality, we can just directly using this route on content and process this separately. So let me just show you after we dive into practical and then we have attribute to JSON. So I will explain that uh, we will be going through this multiple times. It's part of the whole example where we will be using this one uh, attributes we will be using across. So yeah. So let me just first run that uh, generate flow file. So now if I go into the queue and I click here, so I can see the same document what I have shown in this XML viewer. Okay. Now let me explain you what is the difference between content. So when we click on this, this is nothing but the content. But when we click on this information icon, we have something called a detail and attributes. Now, these are the attributes which I was talking about. So when we are reading some data, whether we need to add it to the attribute or to the content is the key for whole operation. So we will see a lot of content, you can see attributes getting added and later we will be replacing the content as well. So let me just show you. So as I told you, so the what split will do is it will split this one document into three documents because I have specified the depth one. So if I just run this, as discussed, we will have three documents flow files, each one contain 
one purchase order. So here you can see it's a purchase order. So now each of the purchase order has been segregated into three flow files for us to process. Now let's go into this particular section. So now here what I'm saying is, now remember this destination because here if you see there are two destinations. One is flow file content and flow file attribute. The first one is we are using attribute because we want to extract this information and we want the flow file as it is and append these to the attributes. So as I discussed, this is the key. So the first node is the key to it. So here I have specified all the properties. If you want to uh, add one more property, you can add. We use ChatGPT to generate this expression. It's very easy with that. And I'm saying destination is flow file attribute. Now, once I run this particular one, we'll see a lot of attributes getting appended to our flow file. So now let's go to the attribute. Now, if I go here, you can see billing city, billing country, and all the information, atomic values, whatever we try to, you can say, extract. They are part of the attributes uh, now. But uh, ignore these ones because these are like more of a, you can say, default attribute generated. Uh, when we split one file into multiple ones, so what it do is it all give a quid to it and also uh, the original file have the one quid. So it's similar to like when say uh, having a parent child. So this will be the original file quid and these are the fragments. So it mean each of the file will have a separate quid. Here you can see this UUI as well. So here as I told, this is the file name. So it is telling these all are part of one particular file. So once we have done this, we will be also splitting it back again. Again, we will be splitting by depth one. So now, as we remember, so this is one purchase order. So when we split this by depth one, so what we are expecting, it will generate four documents per order. Why? Because depth one address is on the same depth. So address of billing type is also on the same depth. And then delivery notes are also on the same depth. And the items is also on the same depth. So when we do it, we will have for uh, this four, you can say as in four different flow document. But now, as we have already extracted these information into the attributes, we want to ignore that. So what we are using for that is we are using something called as route on content. Now coming to this route on content. So let me just first run it. So it has generated multiple, you can say, sorry, uh, multiple document per file. So if I click on the first, I will see address. And if I click on the second, I will see another address of billing type. And if I go on the fourth file, which should be the items itself. So now we have split them. But if you see the, the there, you can say uh, they are also provided as a separate, you can say, wait, because these are now fragment of the bigger file. Now here in the route on content, what we are doing is we are saying, I want to create one property. So let's say you can, if you want to uh, route on address, you can create an address property and just add it here and just give the expression. But right now we only want item because address delivery notes has been already appended to the attribute. So what I'm saying is find me this expression. And here, the main thing is a lot of time people do the mistake in the match requirement. You have to say con content must contain match, not exact match. Exact match doesn't work when we have a, you can say big expression you can say big tags. So in generally just use this content must contain match. Now, once we do it, we will also say there are two types of now, uh, you can say the output. One is items, what the expression we have given. And the second is unmatched. And we are saying terminate the unmatched because we have already extracted them to the attribute. So we don't require it. So if I run this. Again, each of the items will get converted into three documents. And now each document is nothing but whole item tag. So now each one of them is the item tag. Now, also, if I go to the attributes, I still contain all my billing attributes and delivery notes, whatever I required. So these are already all are part of my attributes for each file. Now, I will repeat the same. Uh, you can say now, as we have discussed now in the so this is each. Sorry, let me just open this one again. So, so as now each document is nothing but the items itself, just the items itself. So again, I want to split it by depth one so that I can get individual item to process because I need to extract this value. So what I will do is I will split by depth one and it will, you can see split them into multiple document per item. So if I just right click on it. So if I go in any of the document now here, you will see this is per item. Now, again, what I've done is I in the 
this evaluate x query again i'm saying flow file attribute extract item command part number and so on so on so we extracted all the information again the expression go to chat gpt copy paste the you can say your xml and say like for if i need the expression it will generate and again i am destination is attribute not the content we will use the content now soon okay now once we do it so i will just run this again refresh now i will have all the things like from item part number item product name everything you can say as part of the document and what i've done is i have created a denormalized document for each where we have extracted all the information to the attribute now once we have extracted all the information to attribute we have next task called attribute to json what it will do is it will convert all the attributes from the uh, flow file uh, into the content itself because here the destination is flow file content now we are replacing xml content now we don't further require xml content because we have already extracted all the attributes so and also if let's say you want to uh, only select the selective one you can add the list to it and it will only select those attributes but right now we have kept it empty that means we are selecting all the attribute to convert to json and it when what we are saying right into the content so the output of this will be the uh, json document so if i run it now and I go in here and I see this. So now this has become one denormalized document where we have everything. We have item price, US price, item quantity. Uh, we also have the billing state. We do also extracted file name and other attribute which are not required, which you can ignore by providing the attribute list. So we can just specify, but now each of the file content has been replaced with all the attributes what we extracted so far. Now, after this, it's up to you whether you want to insert it to database, use execute script task, which can automatically do it. And then we also have put uh, database record also, which can automatically put that into database. So with this whole flow, you can easily extract the XML. But the main thing is the key is you always need to know whether you are appending data to attribute or whether you are appending data to content. If you can take, make these decisions uh, very well, then uh, it doesn't matter how complex the XML is, you can easily process it. I hope I am able to explain the uh, whole process. If you have any question, let me know. Uh, you can put that into a comment. Uh, Nifi is a great tool, uh, especially with XML. I have never seen uh, that strong tool which works on XML that good. So if you have a lot of XMLs, you can use it. Also, you have, let's say, if you are receiving this XML in S3 and also you will have s3 uh, you can say fetch s3 objects and all kind of operator where you can directly link with any cloud so it's a kind of good tool it's a wholesome package if you have any question let me know in the comments i hope i am able to explain you the whole xml flow thank you have a good day Bye bye